She's still laughing. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Welcome to Five Lemons Left. We're the real stuff. The lemons making lemonade. So pucker up because we're going to be discussing our life's lessons and the nitty gritty details of our spiritual journeys. Hey y'all, I'm Amanda. And I'm Drusilla. I'm Melissa. Hello, this is Morgan. And I'm Penny. Welcome to our podcast today. (laughs) Welcome, everybody. Yeah, we have a full house today. Welcome back, Drusilla. We missed you for a couple of episodes. Oh, I missed you all. Yeah. Today, we're talking about fear or love. What shows up as fear? What shows up as love? What are we choosing? How are we living our lives? Melissa, I think you have a story about um, a a shocker or a fear that came up. Yeah, I I just uh, told a bunch of my friends about the podcast. So I have kind of come out of the spiritual closet with my friends. They I'm very spiritual around them, but they don't often just hear me talk about my beliefs. So um I was sending all of all of them the you know like a a a text and it was scary for me, a lot of fear of being accepted and and understood, especially I think. Um, but it was funny because I was laying in bed with my husband and we have this big TV at the end of our bed. And I was like, oh my gosh, let's put us on YouTube. We're on YouTube. Let's look at us. And so we came on and our heads were so big <laughs> on the TV. We were so big. And I was looking over my toes at like us huge on this TV. And I was like, oh my God, no, we can't look, we can't watch this. <laughs> do this no let's not so we changed it but um it was it was like it was just an intense experience for me and it was um you know that like imposter syndrome came up and like what do I know you know who wants to listen to me and I even had this thought of like I wonder if I'm gonna log in next week and they're gonna tell me they met and they want to kick me off like I'm, I'm out. So, um, you know, that was just, it's just interesting to, to keep taking these spiritual steps and another layer shows up and, and, you know, we know that, um, in our group that masterful living, it's just another opportunity to heal that stuff. Um, so I'm thankful for it, but, uh, yeah. And I have actually been fearful a lot lately. Um, it's come up because we've been doing a lot of new year's, uh, classes and masterful living, rebooting, like rethinking the direction that we want for this year. And I am really ready to get rid of a lot of fear that I live with. And, um, and also, I don't need to be understood, right? I guess I just need to be able to say my truth. So, so here, here it is. Thanks. Well, I can totally resonate with what you were saying, Melissa, because before we even recorded last week, I told you all that I think I need to leave the group because I don't think I belong. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know, crazy. Mm-hmm. And, but um, yeah, because I thought, well, I am not spiritual enough for this spiritual podcast (laughs) you are all sounding so spiritual and then here's penny oh my gosh it's so crazy how my mind can just spin me out in a nanosecond Mm -hmm. and um you know convince me that i don't belong and so i'm really grateful and thankful i have all you to remind me that that's just crazy fear-based thinking Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Crazy talk. Yeah. So what do you think is the fear underneath that 
um, thought that you were having? Well, I think it was comparison. And um, um, I was just listening to a podcast today. Um, and it said that we spend a great, well, the people who spend the um, great amount of time comparing themselves to others are less happy. And it totally makes sense because when we compare, we despair, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think I started comparing myself to like how spiritual you all are and how like you seem like you're so far along on your journey and you've got it down and I feel like I'm still like a toddler. <laughs> and so I, I was comparing myself to what I perceived as you being better than me. And I know it's just, it's just that ego, just talking that fear, just talking to me and trying to wipe me out. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you switch it for two questions? One, what was the name of that podcast? Oh, it's on 10% happier. And it's, um, I can't remember the exact episode that it was, but, um, Dan Harris was interviewing the program manager for the longest research project on happiness. It started in 1938 oh, wow. and it's been continuously going on. They started out with um, men, white men in Harvard, <laughs> <laughs> 1938, <laughs> very politically incorrect, they were saying. And now they, they're, um, they've, um, you know, most of those people have passed away, but they're um, also, they've been following their spouses and their children. And so it's, um, I'm, I mean, I'm just starting to listen to it. I probably have 20 minutes into it. And, um, so I, I, I'm looking forward to listening to the rest. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. thank you. So that mm -hmm. was question number one, just, okay. And question number two is how did you switch that? So you were in fear-based thinking. How did you switch it from fear-based thinking to loving yourself or love thinking or whatever that word is? Mm -hmm. So I, so first of all, it took courage mm. to share it with you all that that's what I was thinking. So thankfully having a safe place to come to, to share what's truly on my heart and not, and not let the fear overtake me is what really worked for me. And I, I, I tell you guys, I was even losing sleep over it. Cause I was pretty sure I was bringing the whole vibe down for this podcast and that you probably should find somebody else that's more spiritual. <laughs> it's just crazy. It is crazy thinking. Like you said, Drusilla. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I reached out, you know, we, we have friends mm -hmm. and that will help lift us up when we get into those negative spaces. And so, and I, and I did know that it was fear and it was all ego based, just based on the work that I've been doing, but I still needed help to get out of it. I did. And that's okay. That's another thing I'm learning is it's okay to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Thank well, you. Well, if I can add um, that, I think that speaks volumes about your spiritual journey, because we all know that had that been that you were not far along on your journey, that you would have allowed that to dictate your actions and you would not be here today. So exactly. Yeah, for sure. And I will also say I've had those exact same fears about this podcast. And uh, mine was more specific to peering in person. I was all good and all gravy as long as we were talking about it being just video. And remember when we voted on and I was the only one saying no. Mm -hmm. Why don't? <laughs> and I was so I lost sleep over that, just like you, Penny. And it wasn't about my contribution; it was about am I going to be able to be authentic and be visible at the same time? You know, mm -hmm. or am I going to be so concerned about what I look like or appearances or what people think that I can't be authentic? So yeah, that was the fear for me, which is a little bit of a combination of both of what you and Melissa experienced. So same question to you, Drusilla. How are you moving from that fear to love? Um, well, I I realized just like Penny what it was and what was going on. I'm like, oh no, 
not again. This is not happening. Um, but I also um, experienced the same thing outside of this podcast, um, being in the film industry with the documentary that I, I finished. Um, so I'm working with a publicist right now who's like, oh my God, we're going to have to get you out there in front of people. You're going to have to talk about this work you're doing. And I'm like, no, I'm a creator. I'm not a... <laughs> political person I'm not an activist I'm just a creator but really what I was saying is let me play small that's really what I was saying and I knew it and he knew it and he was like no that is not what we're doing you know and so yeah it's it's all the same stuff it's all the same stuff it is it's um you know, if I had to say what it really is for me, not feeling worthy. Yeah. Just not feeling like, I guess what I have to say, who I am as a person, who do I think I am? You know, all of that unworthiness coming to surface. That's what it is for me. So Drusilla, let me ask you a follow-up question again. Sure. Uh, what's the name of your documentary? Um, the Unlearning of Us, and it's a six-part docu series covering uh, systematic racism in America. And the first episode is the Blue Man, which covers police brutality, which is of course so interesting that it, um, you know, all over the news um, today, based on the story about, about Tyree Nichols and uh, what's going on with that. So. Um, yeah, so my publicist, of course, is really pushing me to get out and, and talk about the documentary, um, since that is what's, you know, a lot of the, the news right now. So. Yeah, when I saw that news come out, I thought of your documentary almost immediately, Drusilla, and how we need that out there right now. Yeah, yep, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Drusilla, when I watched that documentary a while ago, it really opened my eyes to a different way of thinking that like I didn't even realize that other people have different experiences in 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 life like I know that sounds so naive right like I you know of course I realize that other people have different experiences in life but um to hear it specifically as it relates to getting pulled over by a policeman or walking down the street it just was I appreciate that documentary and for me personally just uh just a different way of of looking at the world so mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I think it is very relevant to even what we're talking about because um, as I mentioned in the documentary, a lot of what you see when people who experience that, um, what they fear and what they act, how they react is based on fear, you know? And you saw it if you watched the, the tape of, you know, the recent situation. Um, when he ran, it was because he did not see a way that he was going to survive that encounter. And it, you know, and it just creates, you know, and it's fear from both sides and it just creates this situation. It creates this no win situation, you know? Um, and yeah, and it's, it's real only if you buy into it on either side, you know? That's so true. Sometimes I can be triggered back to my childhood uh, experiences and those fears as if it's actually going on right now. Like, I feel like I'm actually reliving them too. Um, mm -hmm. Not to the extent that you're talking about in your documentary, but, but um, my experience is that, yeah, it's so real. It feels so real when that fear can creep up and, and um, take me over and it's not even happening anymore. That's what's even crazy it like lives in my tissues you know they say our issues are in our tissues and it's true yeah yeah fear and love fear and love wow there's a lot of 
contrast in the world to look at. Yeah, and um, going back to how we started the podcast, Melissa, about seeing ourselves on TV, on the big screen-ish. <laughs> um, I, in her bedroom. <laughs> and you're right at the big screen in the bedroom, right? Um, it is, it's, I have, as soon as you said that, I pulled our uh, episodes up on YouTube and I had the same reaction. I have so much fear. Uh, I don't even know what it is about watching myself on, um, like on a platform where other people can see me. Like I feel comfortable because I'm used to you five. I know that you're not judging me. I know that I know the space is safe that we're in and then apply it to like, like an outside space I know what I said I know what we said and yet hearing it and seeing it on tv like I go into judgment yeah. like Penny you were talking about comparison yeah. right so for me I'm like oh my god like my eyes are squinty right like I, I, I think <laughs> I start looking at how my eyes are squinty or my my hair was flat or poofy or um, the sound of my voice is not how I hear it in my head. So for me, uh, the fear judgment takes me into fear and judging myself. And then also like switching it around and like um, opening myself up to judgment of others is a little scary too. Um, I know there's a whole theory, like if you don't buy into the judgment, then other people can't um, other people's words like don't affect you like if someone were to tell me that I have you know blonde hair right I wouldn't buy into that because clearly my hair is whatever not blonde and um, you know so but hearing myself on t you know hearing myself seeing myself it is I guess the word is vulnerable right yeah. putting myself in a vulnerable position and also wanting to stand in that integrity and authenticity, like you were saying, Drusilla, I, you know, like the, what I want to convey is, yes, I have fears and I love myself enough to move forward anyway. Yeah. Yep. So that's what you I have to add to this, dear Morgan. We haven't yeah. heard much from you today. Uh, sorry, I'm just listening in the background. I've got a little background noise here, so I've been staying on mute, but I love what everybody has shared so far. And um, I'm, I feel like it might be helpful to mention that A Course in Miracles says the opposite of love is fear. So that's how all of these different things that we're talking about, self-judgment, self-doubt, unworthiness, comparison, feeling less than, those aren't love. So then they must be the opposite of love, which is fear. So um, just trying to tie that all up for our audience who may not understand the correlation or, you know, from an, from an A Course in Miracles perspective. So, um, yeah. So for me, like I, when Penny brought this up last week, I, I had to disclose my the way fear was showing up for me was, um, yeah, I I have these self judgments that I am not able to clearly articulate my thoughts. I I judge that, or I fear that people will judge me, or I'll say the wrong thing, and I'll sound asinine or something. And um, but then I also have this fear that I'll sound like a know-it-all and like, um, yeah, so it's, it's all of these different fears. And like, I, I even li listened to one of the replays and I don't remember what we were talking about, but I said, and I don't do that anymore, talking about like spiritual progress I've made. 
And I was like, God, that sounds so arrogant and braggy. And it's not even true. I don't a hundred percent not do that anymore. I don't do it as much, but you know, I'm, um, still having a human experience, still working on this shit. So, um, all these different ways that we're putting ourselves out there that people could troll us or be like, uh, that dumb blonde said this and she doesn't know what she's talking about. And she really, you know, all these different vulnerabilities and it's just, um, you know, we're following our guidance. We're doing this podcast. We're putting ourselves out there and, um, yeah, that's the ego's cue to dredge up all of our shit and put it in our face. So, and the show must go on. We move forward anyway. So, yeah. We're the really that. cool thing about what you said, Morgan, is that it's in our discomfort that we have the greatest opportunity for growth. So all this discomfort we're feeling, ladies, we're just growing like crazy. <laughs> Yay. I'll claim that right now. <laughs> this makes me think of um, a 12 step saying, um, don't compare your out, your insides to someone else's outside. So, you know, you hear all this, you hear someone speaking and you're thinking, oh, they've got it all together. They did, you know, look at them show up with their beautiful lipstick and their beautiful hair. And I'm over here and, and, I, you know, I'm just not as wise and as wonderful as that person. And that person goes home and has a terrible experience at home or whatever. We just don't know what's happening mm -hmm. uh, for other people in on their insides. So um, let's not compare our insides because all we're seeing is their outsides, the story they're giving mm -hmm. us. So uh, I love that saying. It's helped me mm -hmm. a lot. So I just want to ask the group, since we've all, oh, except for Amanda, you might have something to add too, but since we've all vocalized like our vulnerabilities coming into this show, um, what do you love about yourself that you do think that you bring to the table? Did you express your vulnerability, Amanda? And I'm just forgetting. I yeah. did. Sorry. I did. I did. So like my squinty eyes, <laughs> I'm like, now I'm like on TV, like trying to <laughs> like, put two picks in them. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I bring to the table? I like to laugh. I really like to laugh. I like to see the lighter side of life. And even when I'm going through whatever it is, I'm going through, like, I love I love my life and I love people and I want people to be happy. And if I can contribute to that in any way, um, yay, go team. So, yeah. Nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think I bring really good energy to the group. I Our think that, um, yes. yeah. <laughs> what did you say, Drisilla? Our lucky penny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, so I, that's what I like about um, me, mm -hmm. my energy. You're also a wealth of knowledge and... Right back at you. <laughs> you have a very soothing voice. You help us get grounded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Amanda, you. you're a you're a great um, director, keeping us on track and just kind of guiding the flow of our conversations. And I what's do the strength the humor you bring, that you Morgan? sprinkle in? I want to know what um, you strength you see you bringing, my dear. I I don't know. I've always thought that I. Um, would have excelled as a teacher. And I don't fancy myself a teacher of this like spiritual stuff, like or an expert, I guess I should say. I don't fancy myself an expert, but I do think I am able to break things down in ways that are understandable or explain them in a new way that's um, 
may be understandable for people who it's new. I mean, it's not new information. It's not like I'm creating anything here, but you know, just, um, so I would say maybe that. I like that. Yes. And I would and agree. I agree. Yes. yes. So it's like, what would you need to say Morgan to get it from a maybe to that is me? I'll just say that's it. That's me. That's you. <laughs> Yay. Let's claim it. Let's do it. Let, let's do it with conviction now, honey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And our time's up. So <laughs> <it's coming. laughs> oh, no, you do. So I'm Melissa. <laughs> You're not getting off that easy, Melissa. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> So I think, I think what I bring is the same thing I criticize myself for because I'm a thinker and I, how I feel like I have to think through everything. And, um, so sometimes I think I get kind of cerebral, but, um, I also, I really, I really just love to share that I've come so far, not in a pat on the back way but as a if, if I can do it anyone can do it you know like if you, you just there's so much hope out there and um so I would just say I bring my true experience I would say that's accurate yeah yeah love that thank y'all and I love that you said that about um the hope out there and that where you've come from through because we probably and I and I know down the line we will share more but on the surface um like Penny said it does seem a lot like having it together like we are all like so together so polished and so spiritual when we all know because we've heard enough of the stories to know that you know we've all traveled um some pretty tough journeys yep. so um yeah I'm glad you said that Melissa so what do I bring just little me <laughs> you know I just feel like my strength is just showing up and being able off to cuff to share whatever is in my heart that's really honestly what I feel I think and, you're really great um, at holding space Priscilla yep yeah Thank you. I do that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot for a lot of people. But I do also enjoy that you all do it for me better than anybody I've ever met. So what I shared even just today before we started recording, and I said, this is the first time I'm sharing this, you know, and it's like, it was so easy for me to do that. And I have friends that are close to me, very close to me that I haven't shared that with. So, um, yeah, and I appreciate that about all of you, but so I accept the compliment, Penny. Thank you. I also think, I, go ahead, bargain. Okay. Thank you. I also think, Drusilla, you, um, keep us focused on our intention to be authentic and organic and not, um, so prepared and planned and I think that's important and you keep us um focused on our intention to be spirit guided through all of this uh and I was gonna say I see you as the as a truth speaker with just how you said in the first place I totally see that so that's why we are well-rounded group yep it yeah is. it's beautiful right. it is. And, I, and I love how Amanda this is something the audience wouldn't know but Amanda leads us in a prayer when we first gather before we start our recording um which is super helpful and Melissa helps us with all the back end technical stuff and the SEO business side of things and Penny keeps us, I mean, we all are, we're just a high functioning organism that spirit brought together. <laughs> Love that. 
Yes. It's really cool. It really is just to think about it, how easy this has been. Yeah, as soon as we can get out of the way, right? Yeah. <laughs> and just let us be led and guided. Yeah. Oh, this is good. What a great conversation today. And I just want to acknowledge, like it is, Morgan, when you brought up, like, say something good about ourselves, right? That was fear, right? Fear came <laughs> up. And we were focusing on what we love about ourselves. And I'll just invite the audience to really think about that, like, can you receive compliments? Like, can you allow the good and the love that you have for yourself to come out and really think about, is it fear or is it love? Yeah. Any final thoughts on that before um, Morgan gives us some announcements? Well, I just wanted to add to that. If any of the members out there in the audience need some support and help, there are many spiritual counselors on this call that could give you support and you can find their um, contact information on jenniferhadley.com under her spiritual counselors. And so there you go. I just thought I'd give you guys a plug. Thanks, Penny. <laughs> cool. yeah. Thank you. Amanda, Morgan, and Drusilla. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Morgan. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening and joining us today. Um, so Melissa referenced Masterful Living and New Year's Reboot. That's two of Jennifer Hadley's classes. Um, you can find more information on her offerings at jenniferhadley.com. Um, we'll link that on our website as well. You can find our website at fivelemonslapping.com. That's Five spelled out F I V E lemons laughing.com. And um, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yo. Have bye, a day, beautiful everybody. rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs>